By nearly any measure, the most successful animals on this planet are the arthropods. They have conquered land, air, and sea, and they make up about 84% of all known animals on Earth, 1 million species in all. Many of them remain undocumented or undiscovered, so the true number of living arthropod species is probably in the tens of millions, and they include such familiar forms as lobsters, spiders, mites, insects, and centipedes. The easiest way to tell an arthropod from any other animal is to see if they have a segmented body, many jointed legs or limbs. They also have an exoskeleton, which is a body armor that helps protect them and can be shed while they're growing. They're also cold-blooded, which means their body temperature depends on the temperature of the environment that they live in. Arthropods are some of the most interesting animals in the world. I'm Julia and I'm Michelle and we're going to be learning more about them today. First we're going to talk about the arthropods that we have here at our facility. We only have one species, but we do have many. So these are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. These guys are invertebrates, like all arthropods, which means they don't have a backbone. They're also insects because they have six legs. As you can see, these guys are pretty big. They can get up to two to three inches in length. They can also live two to five years in captivity. Males and females have a few differences. So here behind their head, as you can see, the males have horns while the females only have small bumps. The males' antennas are hairy while the females are relatively smooth. Males and females also have a different type of behavior. Males are aggressive and they use their horns to ram rivals. During the fight, the males often unleash an amazing hiss sound that gives them their unique name. The roach that hisses more during the fight is usually the one that wins. So the sounds may be used to help determine a roach's hierarchy. Males can also discriminate amongst the hisses of familiar males and strangers. Females can hiss too, but they produce what is called a disturbance hiss when handled or disturbed. Hissing is also part of the cockroach's mating ritual. So how do they make that sound? Many insects that make noise do so by rubbing their body parts together or by employing vibrating membranes. Madagascar hissing cockroaches, however, excel air through their breathing holes. This audible use of their respiratory system is far more common in vertebrates, like the dolphin. The Madagascar hissing cockroach is an amazing insect. Now, Julia, what's going on out in the wild? Well, in the wild, the picture gets a lot bigger. Arthropods are the most diverse group of animals. Many arthropods have a reputation of being nuisance and even harmful. But even if they are scary to you, that doesn't mean that the world will be fine without them. They are actually performing important roles in the environment. Arthropods are important to the ecosystem and to humans in many ways, and that's why we need to protect them. They contribute significantly to vital ecological functions such as pollination, necessary for many plants to reproduce, or decomposition, meaning they break down dead plants and animals and turn them into soil nutrients that supplies the plants with the minerals necessary for life. So today I'm here in these woods because we're going to start an activity that we have at North Texas Animal Connections. We're going to set up a light trap for moths. This is actually an ongoing project that we do during spring and summertime and it's open to the public for everyone that wants to come be part of it, learn more about these awesome creatures or just have some family time with us. Um, in this activity we get to learn more about moths, see them up close and we also keep track of the species found on this area of Northeast Texas. All right, so we have the trap set up right here behind me. 
We used a rope between two trees from which we hang up a white sheet for the moss to have a surface to lay on. And then we're going to illuminate it with a black light and a white fluorescent because moths are attracted to light. They use the moon to navigate so they get confused with the human made lights. So we're going to take a little advantage of that. It's about to get dark so we're going to turn the lights on and it's just a matter of being patient and wait for the moths to visit if we're lucky. We are starting to have our first visitors here. Okay, so this is a green clover warm moth or black snout also called. I don't know if you can appreciate the antenna here but moths are distinguished from butterflies by their antenna which are typically more thread-like or feathery and butterflies have club-tipped antenna. Also, they don't have a nose, but they use their antenna to smell, and they are pretty good at it. <laughs> they detect other molecules from seven miles away. Moths are very abundant, so they are at the bottom of the food chain. But they have evolved to avoid some predators by looking like wasps, spiders, and even mimicking sounds. So butterflies, when they lay in the ground or in any surface, they spend their wings. <clears throat> this way they catch the radiant energy of the sun. And then for moths, since they usually fly during the night, what they do is they vibrate their wings. That's how they heat up their muscles. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and got to learn something new. Please subscribe and keep supporting us.